Chicago in the summer of 66 was the sort of hot that creeps in under your skin. And it wasn't just the weather. There was a lot of talk that summer of civil rights. Everyone was pretty worked up. The movement had gathered momentum down south, and with the Civil Rights Act becoming law just two years earlier, changes were climbing up north to places like Chicago. You'd think they would have had an easier time up here, but you'd be wrong. Riots were starting to break out. So it would have shocked me to no end to find out that the most terrible violence that summer would happen right in my own neighborhood. Jeffrey Manor was a quiet area at the edge of the city. You never expected to look out your window and see a crime scene. The first homicide detective on the scene, Jack Walenda, walks into the townhouse. you can see are blood and girls. He's never seen anything like this before. There are five lacerations, all within a six inch area. You have eight victims. They've been stabbed, strangled, and this one was stabbed in the eye. In the living room is a nude young woman. It appears that she has been sexually assaulted. The victim's wrists are bound. And they were tied very professionally and tightly. It's a complete scene of carnage and uh, mayhem. This had to have been at least two, three perps. There's a great deal of speculation who possibly could have accomplished such a gruesome feat. Is it a gang of drug-crazed killers? There is a screen off a window in the rear of the townhouse. Also, because of the riots and the general sense of tension between blacks and whites, there is some grumbling of, were these a gang of blacks who might have broken into this townhouse and killed these eight student nurses? The crime lab technicians are beginning the process of lifting fingerprints. There is a bloody T-shirt, which doesn't look like it would belong to the nurses. But in terms of clues, there are very few. Mm -hmm. 